welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's Astro Chat episode, I was supposed to talk about the D9 chart and how we keep attracting the same partner in life, because that's what I promised in my last Astro Chat episode. But I'm going to take a detour. We're going to do something different. We're going to look at coronavirus because I have been reading a lot of articles about it today and I want to update the information I put in my Feb Outlook. Basically, in my Feb Outlook, I said that I believe this is happening because of Rahu in Gemini. Because when I clicked back in time to 2001, to when SARS began, and SARS was another virus that happened in China and in Hong Kong, I clicked back to November 2001 to see what was the big placement that was happening at that time. And I discovered that the big placement was Rahu in Gemini, which matches the time that we're in perfectly now. It's really interesting. I made that report a couple of days ago. I made it on Monday. Today is Wednesday, the 29th of January. And I put that together on the Monday. And I've been reading articles about it You know, I've read articles about it yesterday, read articles today, and I've noticed they've updated Wikipedia. And they're now saying the breakout happened 2002 to 2004. So they've changed their dates because I clearly and specifically read November 2001. And I'm pretty sure it said 2003, if I have that right. Let's see if it's saying 2004. between okay now it's saying 2003 to November 2002 to 2003 all right well and then it's saying that no cases have been reported since 2004 Hmm, interesting all right so I'm like trying to get a handle on these dates here because it really impacts uh, if I'm coming up with a theory or or looking at, at different things so according to the new update on Wikipedia it wipes out my Rahu and Gemini theory. So that's not great. But I did find something else that um, is very interesting and that hopefully is positive news for us. Okay, One of the other things I said in my Feb Outlook was that Mercury is going to be in Satyabhishak. And I said that I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful that things get contained or that things get controlled, or that you know they get a better handle on what's going on. And the reason I say that is because Satyabhishak is the nakshatra in the sky that deals with cures, it deals with healing, it's the hundred healers to the gods, it, it's got a real healing quality to it. And I've got a wish that when Mercury enters Satyabhishak, Uh, we get the healing that we so badly need, right? So that is coming and I'm going to give you the dates again for when Mercury is in Satyabhishak. I've got them written on a sticky note here and I'll just read them out. 3rd Feb to 2nd March and then again because he does a retrograde, so he retrogrades out on the 2nd of March but then he goes back from the 17th of March to the 31st of March. So I'm going to put those dates below. And I'm also going to put a link to Amanda Ellis, who is, she's a wonderful healer here in Britain, and she's given some suggestions on how we should pray to help, or what, how we should visualize. What can we visualize? You know, you could see it as prayer, you could see it as visualization whatever word it doesn't matter but she gives us an idea as to what we can do in order to help and I'm certainly going to give it a go what she has suggested I'm pretty sure she starts off the piece I listened to it while I was making lunch earlier today and you know in the background it was on and pretty sure she talked about visualizing white light and all that kind of thing but she tells you what to do so I'll leave a time stamp uh, as well as her link because I love stuff like that. I think that's really brilliant. And the other thing I wanted to bring out is um, that I looked up when did they contain 
the SARS virus? When did they finally contain it? And you know, these dates that I'm getting on Google and, and Wikipedia and all this, I mean, can we trust it? But let's see, when was SARS controlled? I'm just going to bring it up now and I'm going to take a picture of it. There we go, I've got a picture, so if they change it tomorrow, I'll know. Uh, it says here July 2003 is when they contained the SARS virus. So this was the outbreak that we had ages ago. What I did was I thought, let me search this. And I've got a new theory. So all right, maybe my Rahu in, in Gemini theory, that's not quite in operation if it didn't start in 2001. Mind you, I did Google search 2001 SARS, and th there are some articles that are still saying that. So I'm not sure. I don't really know when it began, but I'm pretty confident about this date now, unless they change it tomorrow. July 2003, it was controlled. So I put this in my system and I had a look and I was specifically looking for, okay, who is in Sattva Bishak? I, you know, I don't, I don't care about any of the other houses or nakshatras or anything. I just want to know who's in Sattva Bishak at that time. And sure enough, we had Mars there and Mars did a retrograde. Mars was in Sattva Bishak for all of July 2003 and yes of course it has to be there has to be some Sattva Bishak energy I believe uh, that has to be present in order for this thing to be contained because Sattva Bishak is that part of the sky that deals with healing that deals with cures it is ruled by Saturn Saturn is air. So we've got Aquarius here as well, which is humanity. Uh, it's the humanitarian sign, but it's all of humanity. It's looking at the organism of humanity. You know, I'm a person, I'm like one cell in this organism called humanity, right? We all are one. It's a very Saturnian thing. And Saturn is going to be testing us on that. As I said in one of my earlier videos, that Saturn is going to be testing us on you know, whether we all really embody that principle that all is one, okay? He wants us to know that, and this is a very good way of, uh, of that lesson being taught to us. Sattva Bishak is just so important when it comes to healing something that relates to all of humanity. So it's not just curing or fixing one thing, and perhaps, you know, maybe... Um, an akshatra like a shwini is a, a good example of something that's just for one person. Whereas this is a cure for all, right? It's this Saturnian nature to this. A really good example of someone who beautifully embodies Sattva Bishak energy in his chart is Jonas Salk. I'm just looking at the time, nine minutes. I'll try and be quick. Jonas Salk, I just happened to be reading his book. I bought this book a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the guy, Jonas Salk, who figured out the, um, I was going to say the cure for polio, but really he figured out the vaccine for polio. He pretty much single-handedly uh, got rid of polio from the planet. And he's a non-materialistic, non-commercial kind of a guy. In my eyes, he's a total world hero because he figured out this vaccine and you know he wasn't interested in making money off it. He was interested in getting this out to the people. And what an amazing man. So I heard him speak with Krishnamurti and that's how I got into him. I thought, wow, I have to read this guy's book because he wrote a book, which is this book, Anatomy of Reality, which is all about the combination of um, you know, using your imagination and your rational mind at the same time and using your intuition and your rational logical mind, okay? It's about both. And I thought, gosh, well, I have to read that because I'm really into learning about intuition. And in this book, and I'll just read it out to you really quickly, he says, later when I became a scientist, I would picture myself as a virus or as a cancer cell, for example, and try to sense what it would be like to be either. I would also imagine myself as the immune system and I would try to reconstruct what I would do as an immune system engaged in combating a virus or cancer cell. So he actually pretended to be a cancer cell or to be an immune system in order to come up with his solutions. 
uh, you know, in, in order to come up with things like vaccinations. How amazing is that? So uh, from an astrological point of view, I was looking at this in terms of, you know, um, okay, I need to pretend to be a planet or something like that. But I just wanted to read that out because this is my way of kind of getting this thought into the collective consciousness. And if some of you watch this, you're also helping push this thought up and out there in, in the collective consciousness. Um, yeah, we need to be thinking like this, don't we? And I guess the scientists need to be thinking uh, in these terms as they figure out what, what to do about this crisis. I also bring him up because when I put his chart in the system, he's got Rahu Moon conjunct in Sattva Bishak, right? And it's a prominent conjunction that he has in his chart. It's really, let me bring him up now. It's fantastic. And that's happening in the fifth house. Yeah, it's beautiful. In his fifth house, Rahu Moon conjunct, fifth house. So fifth house is using the imagination. It's very creative, right? How many scientists have written books like this? How many, and that's what people have written on the back of this. They're saying that few scientists um, would ever dare, in fact, publish these thoughts. They're saying, yeah, it's, it's radically new revolutionary uh, ideas for humankind. Absolutely. So I just wanted to share all of that. It's 12 minutes. Um, I also wanted to share the link to Amanda Ellis because I think, you know, those kind of visualizations are brilliant. And I did that when we had the fires in Australia. I visualized rain um, falling across all of Australia. I did that over many days. And I didn't do it all the time, but it's the kind of thing that you know, if you're in a shopping queue or you're standing at the bus stop waiting for a bus or something, you know, spend a few minutes, visualize something like this. So I did that for the Aussie crisis. And then I remember when Fukushima happened in Japan, uh, someone had sent me some instructions on Facebook and they were explaining, these ex instructions were explaining how to visualize cooling water that's designed to cool those heating rods that were melting and i was worried because i'm thinking oh my god this is going to screw up the whole planet um and so I, when i read those instructions i thought brilliant so i remember several times doing the meditation that was suggested and i sent it to um, four or five of my light worker friends i didn't give it to everybody on facebook because this was some years ago and um Back then, people would judge you or think you're a bit weird or something. I don't know. But I don't care about any of that now. Um, and, you know, I thought I would just share this with you now. I have a, a bit of a platform. You guys are all my friends. Most of you are light workers. So how about it? Why don't we visualize um, some of what Amanda Ellis is suggesting in order to um, have this situation contained uh, and resolved? in as timely a manner as possible. And I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, while Mercury is in Sattva Bishak, we do have planetary energy happening in Sattva Bishak. It's coming soon. So let's all hope and pray that Mercury gives us some good intelligence, gives us some insights, um, really feeds our minds, and especially the people who are working on this right now, because I bet there's loads of people working around the clock to to resolve um, things. And I'm certainly not a scientist. I, all this stuff is far too brainy for me. But um, what I can do is I can put out positive energy where it's needed. And that, that's something that I can do. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I can see the time is running out. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for all of that lovely stuff that you do. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.